Hello guys and welcome back. You know, there's some boots which seem to stand the test of time a little bit better than others. For example, I think that in 10 or 15 years time, we're going to look back and we're going to see those mixed media boots. You know, the ones with the really loud colors and metallic foil on them. I have a feeling that we're going to look back and kind of shudder a little bit. You know, like, what was I thinking? Those were hideous. But there are some boots which really look just as good today as when they were invented because they're useful. And a lot of times those are military styles, just like the military service boot. Almost everybody makes a version of the military service boot in one form or another. And it just, it looks as good today as when it was invented. But being as there are a ton of service boots out there, that means that you could probably get one for almost any budget. It also means that they're available in quality levels from eh, not that great to wow, this is amazing and it's just way better than the original ever could have been. Today, we're looking at a boot which lives in the upper end of that spectrum. But where most Northwestern boots are function before form, this one balances both equally. But before I continue, I really want to address some of the commenters who I've seen recently in my boot reviews. These are the guys who beat their chest and basically claim that any boot that's not a work boot or one that is inspired by a work boot is only meant for lumber sexuals. There's a strange thing that happens with blue collar work and I've seen it through my years as an electrician and as a mechanic before that and heavy duty tow truck driver. People tend to judge each other based on how dirty you get at work, how physically demanding your job is, maybe the job site hazards. It's like this blue collar Olympics, which only exists in the minds of the people who are running it. The truth is, I don't care what you do. There are great men and women of character in all walks of life, from the, from the guy who's making your coffee to when you pick it up to go to the job site at the missile silo. So if you simply can't conceive of wearing anything besides your work duds and can't see the merit in wearing a work boot or a boot that's inspired by a work boot casually for the protection and the support and the comfort that you get during your 7 to 3.30 job, well, this video is not for you, and you might as well tune away now before you leave some other ridiculous comment. However, if you appreciate build quality, if you like your boots to stand up to basically anything you could throw at them, both at the job and casually, well, then stick around. I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised. This is the NYX Americana, and let's begin with the construction. As with all NYX boots, the U.S. sourced leather is thicker than most at 6.5 ounces and is a beautiful, natural waxed flesh. It's 6 inches in height, the hardware is all solid brass, the sole is a classic 430 Vibram, and those four layers of oak tanned leather still live beneath your feet. When you first take these boots out of the box, the impression is immediate. They really feel like they will never wear out. They're very substantial. But then you start to notice other things. You start to notice the way that the different tones of the wax flesh start to dovetail with each other. And there's different contrasting points throughout. It's really very nice. And the overall design is extremely clean. There are no stitches or loose ends out of place. It's a very well executed design. Now that design is definitely familiar, and I see this as a much improved Red Wing Iron Ranger. Now the design isn't really derivative, it's not exactly like an Iron Ranger, but there are certain things that call out to it, like that cap toe, like the overall silhouette of it. When you look at them side by side though, this is like a street fighter put next to a regular person. The difference is though, the Americana delivers where the Red Wing only promises. One of the major design criticisms against the Iron Ranger is that bulbous toe and the low block heel, which can look a little bit clownish, especially in the bigger sizes. The Americana, on the other hand, has a definitely a roomy toe box, and it has a little bit of a taller heel, but this one is stacked leather. Now, this has the 430 Vibram sole on it, so you do have a little bit of traction, but I wouldn't do really serious work in either of these if you do need the traction. The Iron Ranger is... A good boot for working around the house, doing, you know, normal day-to-day -day stuff. It's not a job site boot, and this one really isn't either, in my opinion. Especially if you need a lot of traction. For something like that, I would definitely go with the Vibram 100 lug sole with a little bit more grip to it. When you first put these boots on, the first thing that you notice, or the first thing that I noticed, is the roundness of that toe. It's definitely a retro look. It's really, really cool, and I really like it too because my feet are a little bit wider, and it just inherently gives you a little bit more room in that toe box. Now, as with all Knicks, these are made in Spokane, Washington. And I, I know some people say it's Spokane, Spokane, whatever it is. You know where I'm talking about. 
The nice thing about them though is that you can have them built to your foot. So you trace your foot, you send it in, you go through the whole NYX fit sheet process, which I did when I bought my first pair of NYX over a year ago, the Builder Pros. And I use those on the job site to this day. They are the most comfortable boot, work boot that I've ever worn. They're amazing. And that's why I keep getting more nicks. They're awesome. So what happens is when you go you go through the fit sheet process, they have a last a form, which is just like your foot. It's on file. When you order another pair of boots, they make it to that same thing. And this significantly reduces the break-in period. I can tell you this much. After days and nights working in the cold and in the summer in my Builder Pros over and over and over again, they're more comfortable now than they were back then. I, I like the boots better now than I did when I first got them. And in my opinion, that's the hallmark of a great boot. Now, no boot is perfect. And there are a couple things that I don't like about this pair of boots. Number one being that block heel. I used to love a block heel. It used to be my favorite type of heel. But as my tastes have changed, I've started to really appreciate logger heels and tapered heels. Maybe not on casual boots because they are pretty big. But this is sort of blending casual and work. I wouldn't mind going to work in these. As a matter of fact, I've used them out in the garage or around the house without a problem. They're definitely robust enough. But I feel that when you walk with something with a tapered heel, it's a little bit easier to walk. You get more of a natural gait. Now, that might be scientific or it might be all in my head. It's probably all in my head. And the break-in, it, it is substantial. I mean, compared to other boots, it's not bad. And especially when you get the fit sheet. But don't forget, these are thick boots that are built very solidly. So there's a lot to break in there. And being a cut top that's only six inches tall, in the beginning, there were definitely times where I wish I wore thicker socks as that upper started to flex. It definitely puts a lot of strain. So if you're going to walk all day, I would assume that you may have another pair of boots in the truck that you can swap out maybe during lunch. I would definitely suggest it. There's not a padded top. It's just a cut leather top. So in the beginning, the break-in is going to be a little bit brutal, especially around your ankle. But really, break-in is the gateway. And it's sort of the same thing people like about raw denim. You have to put the time in to get the benefit of what is a very pleasurable experience. So when you actually do put the time in and you break in a pair of raw denim and they just fit like nothing else, or you break in a pair of boots, it's like taming a wild horse, I assume. I've never done it. But, you know, you're rewarded with boots that fit like slippers and just feel incredibly supportive and soft and they wouldn't fit me the same way they do you because they're broken into your foot. So the gateway is the break-in. Once you go through that, though, your reward is something that you can only earn. But really, the thing that I love about boots like this one, or the White's Bounty Hunter, or my Urban Loggers, or really any substantial boot, is that I could put them on in the morning. I could do whatever it is I do all day. Let's say on a Saturday where your day could be going to breakfast with the family, then coming home and working around the house, hanging sheetrock somewhere, um, maybe doing a few chores, you know, up on your roof, maybe out back just moving some logs. I mean, it could be anything. And then, you know, a quick buzz on your motorcycle. All of those things require a boot that can be very versatile. These are a boot that will do all of those things. So sometimes if you have a boot that's too dressed up, you don't want to do any work in it. So you got to change, which isn't the end of the world. But sometimes you're surprised. There have been times where I've gone out on the motorcycle and I've seen something I wanted to hike up to and I go on a little bit of a hike. So there are times where I'm very happy that I have a boot that will do everything. Now, does that mean that it won't do one particular thing very well? Not really. You could wear these things casually and they'll be great. Like I mentioned before, they're not a true blue work boot. There's no safety things built in. There's no steel toe or composite toe. If you're working in a house, sure. Light commercial, definitely. Depending on what you're doing, you could use this as a work boot. Of course, I would want a little bit more traction, as I mentioned earlier. But if you're looking to step up from the Red Wing, Wolverine, Chippewa, Timberland crowd, the $350 boot, which is great. Don't get me wrong. I love them. I have some. This is a great option. Once you go made to measure, I mean, people message me all the time. They ask about boots that you know would fit this or that. I will always tell them the same thing, that... Once you go custom, made to measure, it's hard to go back because you're used to just getting a boot that has enough room for your wide foot or your narrow foot or your high arch or your low arch. And when you have a boot that addresses all of those problems and everybody's feet are different, it's very difficult to go back to an off-the-shelf boot. That's why these things are really night and day. And the extra money that goes toward buying a boot that's actually made for your foot 
it's just, it'll pay dividends. It really will, especially in your back and your knees. If you plan on spending a lot of time on these things, well, your body will thank you for it. So anyway, guys, I, of course, want to know what you think of the NYX Americana. It's definitely cool. I love it. It's among the top boots that I'll grab and wear on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I, I began wearing them for this review, and I haven't taken them off since. Well, I have to shower and stuff like that. I, you know what I'm saying. So please let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Where else would it be? I'll catch you next time.